Now it's time for Conservation Station. We take a look at where our hunting and fishing money goes and exactly how it helps the wildlife. Okay everybody, welcome to Conservation Station and we're here today talking about black bears in the beautiful state of Vermont. And Forrest, you are the bear biologist, the, the expert for Vermont State, right? I do work for the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department as a bear project leader, yes. Right, the project leader. And you've been doing this for a while, we were just talking. Yeah, I've been doing this for uh, over a decade in Vermont, and I've actually worked with bears for nearly 40 years now. Wow, that's impressive. As far as the population of bear goes and wanting to keep it at a smaller number, we talked about a thousand bear reduction. Uh, again, that's not only for the habitat, but it's for negative human Oh yeah, it's for tolerance. Tolerance. Right? How many bears will people tolerate? And a lot of the people coming to Vermont really don't understand bears. They've got an innate fear of bears. Right. Um, they're thrilled to see one the first time, but after it tears their bird feeder down or right. rolls their garbage can down the street, then we start getting complaints. And one resource that we have that helps us with these complaints is actually houndsmen. Sure. If a game warden is getting a lot of reports from his district of problems with bears, um, then often he'll ask the houndsman to come and perhaps try to run the bear out of an area, kind of haze it out, gotcha. where hopefully it won't come back to that area, especially uh, bears that are in cornfields. Right. I've heard the same thing. I know a couple of the houndsmen that we run with actually work with Massachusetts as well. Um, and again, we'll have bears in campgrounds or recreation areas, and basically the dogs just kind of run them out of Dodge. Any recommendations for just your regular homeowner that maybe doesn't want to see a bear so much? Well, one, they should recognize the role of hunting. Right. Because uh, I really believe that hunting uh, changes the behavior of, of bears. Just having a hunting season out there, our bears are less apt to come onto our back porches and in our backyards and cause issues. Right, that fear is what you're talking about. Absolutely. It's healthy kind of, and good for a bear to be afraid of men because... It, it is. If, right. if a bear is not afraid of people, it's called becoming habituated and used to people. Right. And when they do that, they go, oh, if people in their backyards are a source of food, that's where I'm going to hang out. Right. And it's hard to live with bears that are not scared. Gotcha. They're big, strong animals and they can be deadly. Right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. They certainly can. Bears are very intelligent and there are times of the year where it's tough for them to get enough calories, right. especially to be putting on uh, weight uh, and planning for the hibernation period during the winter. And so they'll take advantage of an easy food source. Sure. And so we do have problems with them coming into farmers' uh, cornfields, uh, getting garbage or bird seed. Those are some of the major problems and issues. New York State started baiting a few years ago. And once that started, we started seeing garbage problems. These bears are naturally afraid of humans. They won't come to somebody's garbage. They smell human scent. When people are starting to bait, you know, they try to keep much human scent off the bait as possible. Right. I told the bears get used to them. Well, those bears are getting used to human scent and they're coming over here and they're not afraid of it anymore. They're getting in our garbage. Well, I know the, the collar program is another big way that you guys monitor and look after the, the well-being of the bears. Are hounds been involved with that too? They certainly are. Um, we do do research on bears for specific reasons. We've got a research project in the southern part of the state right now that's involved with a large wind energy project on National Forest Service land. Um, and we've collared probably over 50 bears uh, with that project. Um, and most of those, are, or a fair number of those were caught with the use of hounds. Well again, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of that. Again, I'm part of the, I'm a hunter, so I'm an everyday part of the bear's life. Every once in a while, a part of his death, but I feel like we're a part of Fish and Game too. So it's, it's well, an sure. honor to help you guys, I appreciate what you do. Every state that has bears, their management program is different, their population of bears is different. In Maine, they feel they actually don't have enough hunters to control the size of the population. Isn't and it? so it's just been steadily climbing and they're kind of worried about that. Right, right. They just lengthen again. That's how we determine season lengths, bag limits, those that's type correct. issues. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll shake your hand again. Thank you again for <laughs> a great interview. Everybody stay tuned. We'll be back to some more bear hunting.